Good evening, everyone. Hey, this is the Modern Mountain Man, Max, here. Catching a sunset here on my land in Tennessee. I've dubbed Lead Clay Ridge. I'll tell you about the name on another day. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm gonna, when I started about a year ago on this, I said I was gonna do things as much kind of by hand as I could, but I wasn't gonna be crazy about it. So there would be some power tools and power equipment involved, but I would try and do the work myself. So today I got a tool that I wanna check out and I have not tested, but this is our fire pit. There's my lovely wife. <clears throat> um, and uh, so what I'm gonna test out today is a Makita uh, 18 volt battery powered chainsaw. Now, just the way I do with my own products, I like to just record things live and see what happens. I've, I've not tried this. I have no idea what's gonna happen with it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give my wife a, whoops, I guess you gotta turn it around. Sorry. Um, so, you know, the world of battery powered tools has evolved radically. Watch your pinky, it might be in one of the lenses, don't know. Um, and uh, there's one critical trick to it that you gotta decide. I, I'm not here to say that Makita is better than any of the other premium brands. I'm just saying that once you pick one, you're in bed with it for life because the batteries only apply to that tool, but they all cross pollinate. Um, I think Makita has 200 battery powered tools or so that will, you can snap any one of their batteries into and just go do work that would normally take fuel, cords, um, all kinds of stuff or, or accoutrements to make it, make it happen. With uh, the battery technology, you just go wherever you want, do whatever you want, whenever you want, um, with only your only requirement being you got to recharge or have multiple batteries. So <clears throat> um, the reason I've, I'm using the 18 volt uh, Makita stuff is uh, 25 years ago when I started Traction Dynamics, we bought a set of Makita um, handheld tools, a drill and a 3 8 um, um, impact driver and a little old flashlight with an incandescent bulb in it, believe it or not. They came as a kit. We use those for 20 plus years at Traction Dynamics. And uh, we actually ended up buying more batteries because the batteries would, would lose life and such. But those tools still work. We have some of them. So <laughs> I was sold on the reliability and quality of them. Now that's only improved over time as they've learned how to make better motors, better parts and better everything. So um, I have found all kinds of awesome Makita powered and by the way, not a Makita commercial. I'm getting paid nothing for this. I'm just gonna check this tool out. So, you know, there's premium brands, Makita, Milwaukee, uh, DeWalt, and then a more consumer graded one available at Home Depot is Ryobi, all right? So, but those are kind of the big horses, you know, the big 800 pound gorillas. Um, so again, I've got Makita because I bought one and then you're in bed with it forever. Um, you, otherwise, because the, the batteries are very expensive, as I'll explain. Now, uh, the reason I'm buying this, I bought this tool and want to try it. So we have um, a bunch of land here. I bought 33 acres of land and um, we've cleared what we want to clear, but now we want to clear trails. And so I want um, small, easy, lightweight, portable tools that we can put on a little hand wagon and pull behind us. And so I found a bunch of super cool stuff from Steel, uh, the chainsaw people. They've got a power head that you can buy attachments for that, that you just stick in it. So nothing's longer than three feet. So you can have a string trimmer, blade trimmer, a, a blower, all kinds of stuff and fit that in your cart. But we want something that we can cut small brush saplings and things without trying to use a lopper. Use a lopper all day, eventually your arms and elbows and shoulders are falling out of the socket. So I want something easier. Plus my wife wants to build her own trails. So I want something that she can go carry out. And then also is uh, a chainsaw, but let's say not as difficult to use, and not as dangerous as a chainsaw. So when you talk about yanking and pulling and starting, it's cold and where's the choke and where's the thing? You know, if your wife's not a mechanic, um, you know, you got to be able to do all that stuff with a battery powered tool you 
push the safety button and squeeze the trigger and you're cutting a tree branch. So that's what I was very much interested in. Plus it's lightweight, small and portable. Now we're not cutting trees down with it. We want to cut up brush and limb things. So that's the, that's the goal for this tool. So, um, so I bought one. They have a 10 inch and a 12 inch version. Uh, when you unpack it, <clears throat> there's not a lot to it. Uh, the uh, only thing required to assemble it that isn't in the box, there's only two tools. Um, one is a bar tool and the other one is a Phillips screwdriver, which you'll have to provide. Um, and what you're going to do with that, I'm going to disassemble this. I've got it together. Here's the, the unit. It comes with a scabbard, which is super cool, and a, pa a bag, um, you know, a protective bag. I, I bought it without batteries. It doesn't come with batteries. So um, I opted to buy a two-pack of the five amp hour batteries. These are kind of the biggest ones you know I know of. They may have bigger ones, but um, uh, these last the longest. Um, a chainsaw is going to use a lot of battery, um, but these are 240 bucks for a pair. Um, so, but it is what it is. Uh, the batteries are where the money is. Now the saw itself was $200, $199.95 uh, available all over the place. So I'm not even going to talk about you know how you compete on price. There's the little scabbard. I'm disassembling it to show you real quick. Uh, this would be if you were going to change or adjust the chain. This has got a cover like any other professional, nice quality chainsaw in the world. Comes off. You can lift the bar and chain off just like any other chainsaw in the world. Or maybe you've not dealt with chainsaws, so this might be the first time you see this. The only thing you assemble on this saw is this bite tooth. Um, which allows, helps you when you're sawing, lets you dig into a log and then use leverage to force down into a log. It uses a number two Phillips screwdriver. The screws are not very big. And for, if you're not, you know, a, I don't insult you, but if you're not really a mechanic or a person who's uh, familiar with tools, just because a screw is small does not mean it uses a small screwdriver. Okay, almost everything you're gonna come in contact with in your lifetime uses a number two Phillips screwdriver. So. Start with a number two and you put it in and see if it interlocks with the screw. If it does, great. So if you get too small of a screwdriver, you'll strip it out. So make sure you have the screwdriver that fits the screw. The head of the screw is not related to the size of the screwdriver. Keep that in mind. All right. Now, um, so once you put those two screws in, you've done your assembly work short of putting the, the bar and the chain on. It's just like a big boy chainsaw. All right. Now, the chain comes in a bag and they are sometimes tangled and stuff and you'll have to fuss with them and get them you know to uh, lined up uh you're going to start by <clears throat> first time you run it you're going to put the makita name up i'm going to tell you about that in a second a chainsaw chain if you study it uh there's all kinds of things that look pointy and grabby and grippy and toothy on it but it only cuts in one direction and if you really look at it one tooth is pointed nasty serrated sharp this one is dull, you, you know, it doesn't hurt your finger. This one you go, ow, look, I, you know, I can cut myself. So they also draw a picture of it onto the, onto the body of the chainsaw. Now that's gonna end up covered up in dust and chains, chainsaw and, and you're not gonna be able to see that eventually. So just kind of learn this. <clears throat> By the way, they have the, the cutting teeth on each side, you can see are a different color on, on the side. And so, you want them to go forward, they bite, because that's what's going to bite into the wood. And this is my own method that I'm going to tell you about how to get your bar and chain on. I hold the bar vertically. I make sure I got my chain going the way I want it to go. Wiggle it so it drops in on the teeth. And get the whole chain all the way on, just like it's going to hang there, okay? I put a finger in it and pull it tight. I'm going to drop this over the sprocket. Okay. And now the odds are your, your bar is not going to drop on. So you unscrew this little adjuster. What you're trying to do is get that dowel to drop in. Okay. The dowel drops in, you're fine. And some people will put a little bit of tension on this right now. And that's fine, you know, to try and hold it in place. They did a nifty thing with this cover. They hold the screw in so you can't lose it. You know, hey, they're assuming if you're using a 10 inch battery powered chainsaw that you're not running a tree sawing operation. So they've kind of done you a favor. Uh, you're just gonna spin this down. 
When it touches, just back it off a little. We don't want it tight because we're gonna set the chain now. So we're gonna pull on the chain. Um, now, I like to spin it, make sure that it's engaged with the sprocket. Sometimes it'll go clunk, fall on, and now and then the chain will be really sloppy. So pull on the bottom of the chain. Now I'm not pulling on it trying to tear it apart, but I am pulling on it with some effort. <clears throat> I wanna tighten it until when I pull on it, I, I really can't get it to, um, I, what I don't wanna see is, uh, first of all, daylight, that's bad, where I can see the whole chain. But I really don't want to see even but but half of the chain, something like that. Now I'm giving it a good tug. Um, so that to me is good. I want to be able to move it freely with my hands. <coughs> um, beware of the teeth. Again, um, if you got soft hands, you might want to wear gloves, right? If you don't have calluses and your hands aren't hard. Now, <coughs> once you get this set like that, uh, then go ahead and tighten the bolt. Um, and you're good to go. The one word of advice, a brand new chain always stretches. So after a, a, a short period of use, a few limbs, branches, you'll notice this will loosen up, reset it. You might have to do it twice and then it'll pretty much hold its tension pretty good for quite a period of time. Um, and it's just a screw. It has a plus and a minus. You turn it in, it gets tighter. You turn it out, it gets looser. That's all there is to that. Okay, there's no nothing tricky there, all right? It does have a kickback uh, stop, just like a prof any professional saw in the world. Now what that's for, um, here, let me throw my doggy's bone so he doesn't lose his mind. <clears throat> um, when you saw, you wanna put the meat of the saw blade on the object you're sawing. If you, don't, if you make a mistake and you put the tip of the saw, the saw will ride up, shoot up, and it will kick back at you. It's very dangerous, okay? Kinda, can you step back? And, the saw will shoot up at you, okay? They've designed this with a safety device. If you're stupid and you hold the saw and run the blade up, it will run up. Your hand will knock that safety device and it'll lock the chain and it'll stop dead in the water. Won't, won't move a bit, all right? So that's a safety device. Chain moves, chain's locked. That's all there is to it. Simplest thing in the world. Now, uh, just like a big chain saw, you have to lubricate the chain that requires bar oil it does have a bar oil tank this is the only thing you will actually do that's you know a not battery type thing that's related to a normal chainsaw so this little tank here you have to buy a jug of what's called bar oil and this thing constantly drips oil uh, through the bar onto the chain and lubricates it it's kind of cool it does have a little adjuster here that lets you add the rate of flow for oil. I haven't experimented with that. I just got it set to where Makita delivered it to me. And uh, other than that, now we're, we're ready to rock. I've never used this, as you can tell, it's brand new. I have high expectations for it because uh, every 18 volt Makita powered tool I've ever used has met, exceeded every expectation I've ever had. So I've been very happy. Um, you know, with batteries, you charge them up. Um, they've got a cool indicator on them, shows you they're full. Uh, just takes one. The only difference between, uh, you know, so they got two, three, four, five amp hour batteries uh, is the size and weight. So again, maybe uh, you're a 75 year old lady and you don't want to hold this much weight. You can put a two amp hour battery, just get, you know, a couple of them and swap them out. It, it just reduces the weight. The only thing to get this thing rocking is a power button. Turn it on. You're going to hold it just like a chainsaw. Um, you have to grip it. That's a safety right there when you grip it and then there's a trigger It's a chainsaw, so let's go cut something <laughs> We've got stuff to cut <clears throat> uh, Yeah, this is some limmy stuff so uh Put on your eye oh, protection. Sorry. You're wearing your hearing protection. You have your helmet on. All right. Clearly, we've done all that. So we're just gonna try it and see what happens. Well, that works. <laughs> that works pretty good. Now, uh, the first thing I learned right away was pull the trigger, let it spin, and then put it on the wood. So it doesn't have enough guts to just like lay it on the wood. It actually has to spool up a little bit. Um, one thing, if you're a beginner to chainsawing, your, your chain 
should throw shavings. If it gets to where it's throwing dust, you're gonna find it takes a very long time to go through a very small branch, and that means your chain is dull. Um, you can take it to most local hardware stores, we'll sharpen them. Um, I personally suggest you buy two or three more chains when you buy the saw, so that you can just change a chain, carry them all in a one day and get them all sharpened at one time. Uh, sharpening a chainsaw is a little bit of a skill and an art. Most people aren't gonna wanna deal with that, so um, let's see what we got. It's, it's, it's impressive. Uh, I, I haven't weighed it. The weight's on the box, I'm sure. I, if I were to guess, it's six or seven pounds. It's, it's quite nice. So I'm actually anxious to go cut a piece of a tree and see what happens. We got one over here, so let's take a walk. No, I got a tree over there. Yeah, so for sure, watch, I can lay this here, pull the trigger, nothing happens. Um, it does say it has a safety in it. It won't let it, you overexert it, but you got to get it spooling. And, uh, and, I mean, this is great. I feel great about this thing. I like it. Let's, let's go over here. This is a real tree, actually. More, more than a limb. So we were actually going to saw this into firewood with a with a real saw, but here's this. We're going to try this for fun. This, this works great. Now, I, I don't believe, I, I think this is a little bit silly for this saw. So the intention of the tooth on a, on a real proper chainsaw, you push that tooth in, and then you, you use it as leverage and you roll the saw into the wood. This saying doesn't, the 10 inch one here that I'm dealing with doesn't have that kind of guts. Let the saw do the work and it will drop through. So. So I honestly don't believe the cutting wood this size is truly the intention of this saw what it does it so let's do one more you see how it can stall if you put too much effort into it now if i were using a gas powered saw you you use that same technique you you learn to feel where the engine is bogging so you're learning to feel where the electric motor is bogging it, it's exactly the same technique but it's much lighter feel because this doesn't have m horsepower. So, but. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm not sending my wife out in the forest to cut down, you know, trees. This is truly for uh, lemon stuff up. So let's go do a little more lemon real quick here. I mean, this is awesome. So uh, I'm not gonna teach you how to, the techniques of, of cutting wood and such, but uh, you know, note that you wanna watch which way wood is gonna try and bend. Is, are you gonna, do you need to cut it from the top or the bottom? Is it gonna fold up and pinch your saw or is it gonna drop away? So here, we'll, we'll go cut something over here. Let's try some more. <coughs> um, here, I'll just do some of this stuff for fun. So see, this will fall away. So I'm going to cut it from the top. I mean, this works great. I'm totally pleased with this. All right, so this is in the air. It will fall away. I'm going to cut it from the top. I see if I start it on the wood, it'll stall. It doesn't have that much guts. But if you let it spin, it cuts, it cuts like butter. Um, where... You would, an example of where you would want to cut from underneath is say your branch is under pressure. I'm simulating that. If I were to cut from the top, it's going to stop, grip my blade. Let me put some pressure. See as the branch caves in, so you're going to cut from underneath. Yeah, this thing works great. Uh, I'm thrilled. I'm a fan. Um, this is the Makita XC. 
U06 10 inch. I'm sorry. XC U06 uh, battery powered chainsaw 10 inch. I believe they have a 12 inch version. They might even have one that you put, you go 36 volt and put two batteries on. Uh, don't quote me, but take a look around if you're interested in this. I'm going to turn it off. I mean, this, this couldn't hurt a fly. So anyone can do this. Uh, I'm thrilled. So thanks for watching the Modern Mountain Man Max. I'll be back with more cool product reviews. And actually, I'm going to catch everybody up with my property here and tell you what we've been up to. So thanks for watching. And I get my chainsaw back. Tammy gets a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs>